Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is dedicate. And I want to thank the viewer, Sri Ram, for making this particular suggestion. Uh, this was uh, one of their requests. Uh, and I want everybody to know who's watching. I love hearing um, your uh, ideas for different verbs for future videos. So feel free to leave a comment uh, with your ideas. So let's begin our discussion of the verb dedicate. This can have a few different meanings. One would be to give time or possibly effort, or maybe both, to a particular task or a goal. So uh, you will hear of, of people dedicating their time to learning a new language. That might be an, a great example uh, for our viewers here. I think many of you are d devoting or giving this time to um, your particular goals related to your English communication skills. A second way you might hear dedicate used is to mean to set something apart for a per particular purpose. You might hear of uh, the government or perhaps a school, uh, a business, setting aside or setting apart some money, some funding for some particular initiative or purpose. That's uh, one way to use this. A third way you might hear dedicate used is to mean to cite an artistic work as being issued or performed in someone's honor. Frequently, uh, writers, authors will dedicate their, their pieces of writing, maybe their books, maybe it's poetry, um, something else, uh, in someone's honor. So uh, maybe it's a, a co-worker, a friend, a family member, um, a teacher, someone who helped support or, or maybe inspire them through the writing process. A fourth way you'll hear the verb dedicate used is to mean to formally open or unveil a building, a statue, or, or something similar. Um, I've got, a, I think, an, a couple examples of this uh, a little bit later, um, but, but it essentially um, entails having sort of an event. Um, usually there are speakers talking uh, about maybe the importance of this building or this statue, perhaps a, a plaque in a park. Um, and uh, it's, again, kind of connected to this idea of maybe honoring um, the, the people who had the idea for this or the contributions that maybe they made to the community. You should know that dedicate is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, we need to drop the E and then add ING to form dedicating. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by just adding the letter D since this verb already ends in an E. Our base verb, dedicate, t, t, ends in an unvoiced T sound. So, our past tense ending is going to make an id sound. And we're going to add an extra syllable as we say this past tense or participle form. It should sound like this. Dedicated. Dedicated. I hope you hear that id at the end. Okay. Now, uh, I don't think there are any phrasal verbs that we need to study or discuss. So uh, we can move on to a discussion of uh, how we might use this particular verb tense in the simple past and the present progressive. We'll start with the simple past tense. We use this verb tense to talk about activities that were completed at some known point in the past. You might see time signals like yesterday, last week, or even a specific date in the past. Um, but you aren't required to use a time signal. Uh, many times it can just be implied as part of a longer passage or as part of conversation. And the nice thing about the simple past tense is that our structure is going to be the same no matter what our subject is. So in the affirmative, we're going to have our subject, and then we're going to have this ed form of the verb since we have a regular verb. An example might be, 
the author dedicated her most recent book to her first grade teacher. Okay, so um, what this uh, verb maybe looks like um, if you're opening a, a book before the uh, you get really to the meat of things, uh, there might be a page, might be just a few lines uh, where an author says, "I dedicate this book to." this person, and they might provide some reasons why they are honoring or giving um, praise or credit to someone. Okay, now let's take a look at negative. Again, our structure here will be the same no matter what our subject is. So we start with our subject, then we use did, not, and then the base verb. You can see that in the example. The bill didn't dedicate enough funding to support schools. This goes back to that second definition where we talked about setting apart or setting aside. So um, here, uh, this sentence is, is kind of criticizing some recent legislation. Could be at a, it could be really just about any place. Um, it, and in a state, it could be at our, our federal level here, um, but it's saying we did not set aside enough money to assist schools. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple past tense. To do this, we start with did, then we have our subject, and then the base verb. So I always like to point out to my students, notice in the negative and our yes or no question, I'm not using that ED form. I'm only using it in the affirmative. Here's another example. Did you dedicate enough time to studying last semester? I know uh, many colleges are beginning uh, their semesters or their school years um, uh, around this time. And I know there are also many students who uh, have goals maybe to perform better, do better uh, than a previous year. And so this might be a question um, you ask yourself, right? So did I devote, did I give enough time to study? Now let's take a look at the present progressive. We use this verb tense to talk about an action that is in progress or something that is happening now. And uh, I like calling this the present progressive because the two P's help me remember I need two parts to form this verb in the affirmative. You will hear some books and teachers call this the present continuous. That's fine. It means exactly the same thing. So in the affirmative, my structure will be to start with my subject, and I need to pay attention to my subject because then I'm going to use a present form of be. So if my subject is I, I'll use am. If my subject is you, we, or they, I'll use are. And if my subject is he, she, or it, I'll use is. Okay, so subject, form of be that matches, and then we use that ing form of the verb. You can see that in my example. The sheriff's office is dedicating more resources to keep drunk drivers off the road. Okay. This would also kind of go back to that second definition. They are uh, maybe asking their officers to spend more time focused on this particular issue. They might also be setting aside more money uh, to address this problem as well. Now, if I want to make a negative present progressive sentence, my structure here will be to start with my subject, then I use the form of be that matches, then not, and then the ing form of the verb. You can see that in the example. Many people aren't dedicating any time to rest. Uh, I saw a sentence like this uh, recently as um, a doctor was talking about how um, how negatively a lack of sleep, a lack of rest can uh, impact our health and our our day-to-day -day lives and day-to-day -day performance even. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question. To do this, we start with our form of be, whichever form matches our subject, subject comes next, and then we use that ing form of the verb. Here's another question. Are you dedicating more time to your hobbies. Okay. So here we're 
asking someone uh, kind of about their, their ongoing activities. Are you spending more time doing things you enjoy? Now, let's spend a moment looking at some words that are related to our verb dedicate. And the first word we're going to discuss is just the noun form of this word, dedication. Right? So you see that I-O-N ending. Okay? Just like our verb, the noun dedication can have a couple different meanings. Uh, one uh, meaning is to refer to sort of the quality or the state of being dedicated or committed to some task, a, a goal, a, a very specific purpose. An example of this might be medical professionals' dedication to their patients during the pandemic was inspiring. Uh, I thought about this as this quality of being committed. Um, and I know there were so many medical professionals, uh, staff and in, in, in a variety of, of fields and uh, departments, spending extra hours, spending more time away from their family, putting their health at risk um, because they had this goal of helping heal people, uh, helping them recover and survive um, this awful uh, pandemic of the COVID, right? So a second way we can use the noun dedication is to refer to that act of formally opening or unveiling something. So this ties back to the fourth meaning of the verb we discussed earlier. An example of this, there will be a dedication of the new hospital wing this weekend. So uh, if I heard a sentence like this, my mind kind of goes to an event, a ceremony. Uh, maybe they'll recognize people who donated to help uh, fund or uh, assist with the building of this uh, new portion or new part uh, of the hospital. A third way you'll hear dedication use is to refer specifically to the words um, that maybe you find at the beginning of a book or at, uh, tied to some kind of artistic work. And again, the purpose here is to honor um, or acknowledge uh, maybe the support one has received in helping produce this work. So an example here. The author wrote a beautiful dedication to her family. Okay. You might see just that, that word dedication at the top of a page in a book as well. Another related word you might hear is the adjective dedicated. Okay. So this can have a couple meanings. One uh, is to note or describe someone who is very devoted to a particular task or some purpose. So an example of this, we might describe a particular company's employees as being very dedicated. A second way to use this adjective is to note that something is going to be used for maybe one particular service or one purpose, or it's intended to be used in sort of a limited way. Let's take a look at an example of that. The city has new dedicated bike lanes. Maybe this has happened in, in your city where there are kind of these narrow lines on the street, too narrow for a car. Uh, and you might see uh, pictures of bikes or bikers uh, or maybe the words biking uh, painted in between these lines. So the purpose of that portion of the road is to be used for cyclists, for people who are riding bikes. Um, and the idea here is we're going to try and keep them uh, maybe a little more separated from the cars in order to keep them safe. The last word I'll leave you with today is the adverb dedicatedly. So hopefully you see that suffix ly. It's a good sign we have an adverb. Okay. Uh, and as you might guess, this adverb is describing an action that is being done in a do devoted or a dedicated manner or a dedicated way. An example of this might be, the company has been working dedicatedly to produce high power electric motors. Okay. So again, uh, we might use this to describe uh, 
an organization or a person's hard work. Um, you'll see hard work and, and dedication kind of go hand in hand quite frequently. Thanks so much for watching this video. And again, a uh, special thanks to Sri Ram for this suggestion. I hope you all have a great day.